they each will go in different directions and then they'll change course once they reach the radius. Today I'm going to share with you a new script that will enable you to spawn custom patrols anywhere in your mission. Spawn and Patrol Script. Right, we're going to set up a little mission here and we're going to start with F3 triggers and we're going to place down a trigger. Edit the trigger and we're going to set the activation to radio alpha. This is going to be a radio trigger. We're going to set it to repeatable and that's all we're going to do for the moment for the trigger. Next we're going to go to this location and we're going to go to F6 markers and we're going to zoom in and we're going to place a start marker and we're going to place that right about here. We're going to edit the marker and we're going to name it mark1 and just hit OK. Next, we're going to go to the Scenario tab at the top, and then we're going to go down to Open Scenario Folder, and we're going to install a new script. Here we are in the Mission Folder, and I'm going to bring up another mission with the script, and I'm going to copy it and paste it into the mission. I'm going to link this script for download in the description of the video, and that way when you guys get it, take the script and put it into your Mission Folder just like I did here. Let's review the script. Spawn and Patrol script. This was written by Rightagear and myself, and this is what the script does. This script spawns infantry groups at a marker you set. They will patrol the radius of the marker based on the distance in meters that you defined in the parameters. During the patrol, the group will move in a circular path from a starting angle from an order of north, east, south, and west. Each new group spawned will move in a new direction, which will be opposite of the previous group's direction, but random. Let's go down to how to set up. So the first step is to move the script into your mission folder. We already did that. Let's go to step two. The second step is to place a marker on the map and name it. We already did that. We'll go to three. You basically put this code into the INIT box of a trigger. It could be an area trigger, a radio trigger, and that's how you would call the script. Number four, for a trigger-based parameter, adjust the parameter code below to what you want, and then put it into a trigger's INIT. You have two options here. You can have the parameters set in the script and just use that, or you can have multiple triggers with custom parameters, which is basically what this is for, parameter information. So here we have an example usage. This is basically a parameter. So right here it says four. This is the number of groups that will spawn. Then you have mark one, which is the marker name. Then you have one, which is the respawn limit. Yes, the AI will respawn when they are killed. And here just basically says they'll respawn one time. N is the respawn delay. And 100 is the patrol radius from the marker. So they will spawn at the marker, they will just walk out into a radius of 100 meters and then start patrolling around that marker 100 meters out. Here is the class names of the groups that will spawn. So this is literally one group. If you have four set here, that's 12 soldiers, four groups that will spawn. Here's a description. Define which faction side is to patrol. Default is west. So what you're going to look for here is where it says west. If you're using east as the faction that you want to spawn, then just change this to east. Put it in capital letters. If you're using independent, then use independent or resistance. Is another comment. It says define the parameters below if you're not using the full parameters in a trigger. So what that means is if you scroll up and go to this line here, you're basically going to use this code here in your triggers to use these parameters. If you're going to use this parameter, then that's all you need. You just basically update this to what you want and then you put that in the trigger and you're set. But like I said, if you're going to use this, then you got to set your numbers and stuff here. So the first parameter, number of groups to spawn. So this is right now, this is one group. 
Then we have marker name of the spawn point. So this is the marker name. This is what you're going to define. So we have this defined in the mission already. So mark one is the marker name. Then you have two is the number of times a group can respawn when killed. Then we have the delay, like we see here. Then we have 10, which is the delay in seconds before the group respawns. And then we have patrol radius 100 is the distance, patrol radius distance around the marker in meters. Class names for each group. So here are the class names. So remember, this is class names. It's three soldiers for one group. Now, if I set this to two and I spawn this group, it's not going to be just one group that spawns. It's not going to be just three guys that spawn. It's going to be six of these soldiers. Here we're going to use the script based our parameter, which is the one we just went over. We're going to copy this. Press Control C. We're going to go back into the mission and add this to the INIT box of the trigger. Let's go to the trigger and let's edit the trigger. We're going to go to the on activation box and press Control V and paste the code. Now after the code I'm going to put a hint for feedback so that we know that a group spawn we'll just put hint and then quote and then AI group has spawned exclamation point and end quote and then semicolon and since it's a radio trigger for the text we're going to put spawn and then group. Alright let's hit OK and that sets up our trigger and let's save that. Now we have this code in the trigger. What we're going to do next is go down to the parameter that we're going to use. And what we're going to do here is we're going to acquire some class names and put those class names into this array right here. All right, so let's go back into the mission and I'm going to show you how to acquire class names. All right, let's go to F2 groups and place down a fire team and place them right here. So it doesn't have to be a group. It could be individual soldiers that you put together. You're gonna to highlight each one of those individual units or the group itself. Then you're going to right click one of them and then you're gonna go down to where it says log and then you're gonna to go to where it says log classes to clipboard. Once you click that and the menu disappears, then delete the group or your units that are highlighted what you're going to do now is where it says class names and you see this line here you're going to go in between the brackets here and then you're going to press control V that's going to paste the class names that we logged now before you do anything each one of these class names needs a quote before and after and a comma to separate them you have one class name here you have quotes on either end and then it's separated. It separates the next class name by a comma. So you just check your class names, make sure they have quotes before and after and no quote at the end before the last bracket. And we'll save that and let's go in the mission and test this out. All right, here we are in the mission. Let's press zero and then go to radio and spawn our group. So the group spawns on the marker and we get the hint that we put in and the group, as you can see, will start out in whatever direction. You don't know which direction they're going to start in. But they will be set to limited or basically walk, and their behavior is set to safe. All right, so that's one squad. Let's bring up the radio again and spawn another group. And this group is going in another direction themselves and they will basically go this way. All right, let's spawn another group. So you could see that spawning one group because we have one group and four units defined in for the class names so that's four class names and you get four units so if we were to have two groups defined then eight units would spawn eight of these guys would spawn at once so you have to be careful of what you want to spawn and it really depends on your mission all right let's spawn another group And you can see 
which direction these guys are going. So the idea behind this is they each will go in different directions and then they'll change course once they reach the radius and then they will cross paths kind of doing a, like a pincer movement. We're going to go up to the code for the trigger based parameter and we're going to update that. We're going to copy these class names right here, press control C and we're going to go up to this array here and replace the class names and update them with what we were spawning. Then what you're going to do is you're going to copy this and we're going to put this into the trigger. And let's go to the trigger and edit the trigger. We're going to go to activation and we're going to change this to blue four present. Disable the repeatable part of this and we're going to go here just highlight the first code keep the hint press control V with this we're gonna spawn what we had before and we'll just hit OK next we're going to resize this trigger we we'll use the uh, area widget and I'm gonna set this up so that player can walk into it I'm gonna make it square and that should be big enough now I'm going to set up another trigger, press control C, and I'm going to put this trigger right here, actually. I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to edit this one, and I'm going to set this to two groups. And you're going to see what happens, and we just hit OK. Alright, let's save that, and let's check it out. Here we go, I'm going to walk through the trigger, and we have one group that spawned. And now they're going to go patrol. Alright, we're going to walk through the other trigger. And now you see two groups have spawned. So one group has decided to go the same direction as the previous group. And then you have this second group that spawned with them to go the other direction 